coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off so when i was working on selena the series for Netflix um, to play the role of Abraham Quintanilla. I put on a specific amount of weight, which I was fine doing, but also realizing it could be difficult to get that weight off. I got back into my physical regimen with James Leha, but um, I was still having trouble with just those last amounts. And that's when I got to meet Arturo from Laredo Medical Weight Loss Clinic. And just the products that he gave me kind of put me over the edge. I feel great about myself. We're back at you in Gloves Off, and I'm here with a great guest, uh, George Saldana, who is the founder of 2503, which is an advocacy group that fights for the rights of non-custodial parents here in Texas. And the big issue right now is a lot of folks get divorced, go through a process, and one of the most difficult times is when your child is in school and the non-custodial parent is not allowed to go to events or get get grades, report cards, nothing, everything. The, the doors are shut by the school and the school district, and this happens all the time. George, how are we doing today? Good, man. Thanks for having me back. Oh, thanks for always coming on board, man, because we're now, right now school's starting, and this is an issue that many parents go through. I know I went through it. There's a lot of people that are just starting out and going through it, and others are going are going going to start finding out what it is. And uh, sometimes when kids are in the elementary grades, you don't deal as much as when they're in high school. But it's going to catch up to you one day or another. And that is when you try to go to an event, when you try to get report cards, when you try to call the school and they tell you you can't. Uh, Explain a little bit about that, George. Well, I, I've been going through this for years, and I can tell you that um, I have two children that have aged out of the system, and um, I wasn't involved in their schooling. And it wasn't because I didn't want to. It's because I wasn't allowed. And it's hard to say that. And you'll have lawyers that say, well, you didn't try hard enough, or, or uh, you have that right. You just didn't uh, take advantage of that right. And that's kind of why we're having this this podcast or this vlog or blog or whatever we're we're talking about is because, um, you know, there's going to be interference anytime a non-custodial parent wants to be a part of their child's education. So I think it's 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 we should talk about it. We should talk about some of the things that um, and I, I say custodial parents, some of the things that the dirty tricks that custodial pl parents play. Um, with the school in order to exclude the non-custodial parent from uh, being active in their child's life. You're correct. You know, I've seen, I've seen, um, I've seen when when you go and try to get the report card or you go try to see what your your you send the progress report and you don't get anything back. And when you call back again, they all of a sudden they tell you you do not have the right. Regardless whether it's written in your decree or not, in your decree it says you have the right, the school districts will tell you they don't. So let me put it to you this way. I went through school. I got two kid, three kids that aged out, two of them aged out already. And I, I never saw a report card come from them. And I fought it time and time again. They told you, well, you need to be placed in this email and you place yourself in an email and all of a sudden you weren't in the email half uh, through the school year, a month later, you're not. So you're going over this, this cycle that's spinning left and right. And all of a sudden you start finding out and you tell them, you take the decree, they'll ignore you. You tell, um, on my instance, my daughter was a senior. The youngest one was aging out. She was a senior. She just aged out a couple of months ago. 
it took me physically to take it to the board and the superintendent to find out where everything was going because this it, it was just like spinning wheels. And I looked at the problem, George, and what I saw was it was a problem that is, um, how can I say, it's embedded in the culture of the educational system. Right. Really? It is. Definitely. Regardless whether you have the rights by law and a decree or by the laws of the state, they will impede your process. And it happens. And the only thing I could say is, you know, I will kind of woke up kind of too late, I guess. I saw a picture that they that the school district posted on, on Facebook and you had something like fifty something principals. And of those 50-something principals, only four of them were men. And I kind of looked at it and I kind of said, wait a minute. I bet you that if you look at all those principals that are women and men included, I bet you a good percentage of them, about 70, 80% are divorced. And if you look at it in further in depth, probably about that, those that are divorced, they're still divorcees. And they're kind of bitter, and there's things going on towards the fact that's going on here. I mean, I I hate to speculate and put I'm not I don't have a a, a tin foil hat on, but when I saw that, I said to myself, this is something that's embedded inside the culture. And when you talk to people, this happens. What are things parents can do when this occurs? Um. So what I I always tell parents is one. You know, have a valid uh, court order, a recent valid court order. And a lot of parents don't even know where to get those. And if you would just go to your district clerk's um, office, uh, which is usually in the court in the courthouse, and you ask them for an updated copy and you can have it uh, stamped with today's date on it. And they'll give you uh, they'll give you they'll burn you a copy for probably 10 cents a page. And if you want it certified, it'll be uh, like a dollar a page for your your court order. But um, for some of y'all that are going into. Uh, elementary school, middle school, and you're you're a non-custodial parent, and you obviously care about your child's education, keep that court order. And if you have to, you're going to have to start flexing. You're gonna, And what I mean by flexing is you're going to have to let people know that that you're an, an able-bodied parent that wants to be involved. And they'll tell you all day long, oh, we want our parents involved in our children. But just because they say that, it, does, it doesn't reflect their actions. And in my case, um, I would call the school every year. And I live outside of the school district. I live uh, three and a half hours away from the school district in which my children attend. So it's hard for me to go over there every other day or every week to um, kind of flex my non-custodial powers. And when you call and you try to talk to them and try to be reasonable with them, uh, a lot of these school clerks like to give you the runaround. Well, I can't make that decision. You're going to have to talk to the principal. You're going to have to talk to the school district, talk to the attorney of the school district. I can't get involved. I don't know what to do. And you just get the runaround. And for many years, I they would sign me up on the Skyward, which would give me my my children's grades. And I could go back and forth with the teacher. But then once I started as a non-custodial parent getting involved and, and talking with the, the teacher, um, my Skyward Skyward account would stop and I couldn't. I couldn't log in. So I'd have to call the school. The school would tell me, hey, bring your court orders. We'll put you back in. But what I found out was that my exes were taking me off of the, the school record. And as a non-custodial parent, uh, you can add yourself to the, to the school record, but you have to go in there every time and bring your court order to show them. And for whatever reason, some of these school districts, some of these uh I wouldn't say counselors, but some of the admin that are in the office, they'll remove you and won't add you because the custodial parent removed you. And they have that right to do that. So it's it's kind of a chicken shit way of playing. Right. So they know that the non-custodial parent is involved. They don't want the non-custodial involved. So what they do is they start removing them from the school records. 
Um, I've had to call, hey, I was just on this. Why can't y'all put me back on? We'll bring your court orders back. And again, it sounds easy sitting outside the window looking in saying, oh, we'll just take your court order. But when it happens repeatedly over the school year and over the school years, and you just at, at some point, it, it's it, you have to beg mercy because uh, and in my case, again, I was three and a half hours away. I'd always have to go over there to the school to try to add myself back on there. There's a lot of non um, let me take that back. There's a lot of custodial women, mothers that will just be spiteful. They'll put their whole familia on the emergency contact sheet. They'll have the abuelita, the grandma. They'll have the sister, the cousin, the, the brother, but they won't have no father. And in my case, what I did was um, you can ask the school district for um, public information requests. You can get your child's records. You can get the emails going back and forth from uh, the counselors to the custodial parent. And what it boils down to is that they give the custodial parent a lot, a lot of, of weight when making educational decisions. So part of what we're doing here today is we're talking about what the rights of parents at all times are. And that's in the family code. And if you're watching, I would encourage you to look up Texas Family Code 153.073. Let me repeat that. Texas Family Code 153.073. Those are your rights of parents at all times. Unless the court has said you don't have a specific right, you have these rights at all times by Texas Family by the Texas Family Code. Absolutely. You know, and uh, everything you said, you know, I went through. And it's people you need to you need to understand one thing if you're going to be in, involved in your in your children's lives and again there's a lot of parents that have become non-custodial they just zoom themselves out of everything and they just they they lost a fight before going in and they and they do they just say well you know that's just i can't beat the system well good for you guys if you can do that and if you can't you love your kids too much that you're fighting for them all the time then you're going to get go into some trouble one thing that I found out early on was that every time they had a practice, every time they were in some club and they had a practice or they had a tournament or they had an event, it fell on the following Saturdays, first, third, and fifth Saturdays. And I remember I had planned something. My kids were small. We had planned something to travel out that weekend. And uh, they had to take this for their for their final. My son was like in sixth, sixth grade, and they had to go every first, third, and fifth for the for like four months. And I told um, I remember I, I, I told them it's always going to be this way. Oh yes, it's always going to be this way. And I called the principal, and the principal said, "That's because that's the only weekends that teacher can do it because her kids are with her father." And I go, that's the only weekends that me as a father, I have to spend time with my kids and we've been playing them. So you're telling me that this is discrimination. Then I, read, I looked into a pattern and all the events of all the other little glee clubs and chess clubs and robotic clubs and everything else were held on the first, third and fifth Saturdays. So this is a pattern that exists. So they're going to try to remove the child from the father's life or from the non-custodial parents life in this case there and I told them listen to me I think the discrimination at that time my kids went to a parochial school and I sent a letter to her and I sent a letter to the bishop and all of a sudden that thing was squashed and I said well, you know you guys want to talk about discrimination this is discrimination I just saw your all clubs here your 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 calendar took a photo of it and sent it forward but that's what happened so if that happens in this one district which was a parochial district it happens in every other district. The problem is you have to take a look at how many, and nothing gets women. How many? But the problem is you have a lot of a lot of these educators out there that are women. A lot of these educators that are in here uh, claim you know they're single moms. A lot of them do not like their exes, and so they play they place all fathers that are that are single fathers in that category as their exes and that to me is is a problem that we have 
that's where yeah, it, it, it hurts it hurts the emotional and mental and cognitive behaviors of the child i mean we have that research it it it's it's plain as day the state has already found out that you know children need two parents involved uh in their educational decision making and and it, it's going to benefit the child's cognitive behavior and if you're not giving uh, allowing that non-custodial parent to interject um the way he wants his child to be taught at that school when that child starts acting as a bully starts harassing then all of a sudden the uh teachers start to fire back that that child um has some unstable parents they never say mom right they never say mom they always say well their parents are all screwed up that's why this child is messed up and here you are you have parents um like us you know uh fathers or non-custodial parents that are actually fighting to be a part of that child's educational uh decision making and we have that right but for some reason they look over it and then they want to point the fingers as well he has bad parents at home and that's why uh he's such a bully or he's causing us problems in this classroom yeah you're ab absolutely correct and they even go a step further they say the deadbeat father's fault that's the reason why he's acting that way <laughs> and, and i've heard that by principals, vice principals, counselors, the police of the school, the teachers of the school, and they'll say it. And then they go. Then they go and tell the ISD school police that Mr. Saldana and uh, Professor Butron are causing problems because they want to know this or they want to know that or they want to show up to the school function and the custodial mom doesn't want them there because he's crazy or he's trying to commit suicide or. They'll, they'll bring up all these excuses trying to uh, plant a seed in those administrators and in those ISD police officers so that when you do show up, they're already thinking you're going to cause a problem. And all you're doing is trying to be a parent and be involved in the child's educational decision making. I don't understand yeah. it. But, you know, here's here's a word word to those that are out there because we're talking about this and you're going to go through this. And there's something that you you said that's 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 on point get your current decree stamped every year every school year and every january go back over there to the county court and get two of them get two copies won't cost put you it, more put than it, put it on file put it on file keep it on file uh if they bump you off go back in there they're gonna they're not gonna keep you updated it's gonna be up to you to keep calling trying to make uh those contacts whether it's with the counselor it's the school the school teacher and uh, Paul, if you want me to, I can go over uh, the rights as per the family code for you so that people that are watching know what their rights are, unless they're limited um, by the judge. You want me to do that? So in Texas family code, one, five, three dot zero, seven, three, one, five, three, you can Google, just go to Google type in Texas family code, one, five, three, dot zero seven three of course this pertains to texas parents because it's the texas family code unless limited by a court order a parent appointing as a conservator and we're talking mostly to joint managing conservators uh parents mothers dads custodial not custodial parents uh and again those that have been following me y'all know that custodial not custodial is not defined within the family code uh conservators are so unless limited by a court order, a parent appointed as a conservator, whether you're a joint managing conservator or possessory conservator, you have these rights. They should be on your court order. You should read them. After you read them, you should try to um, piece them together because some people just read them. It goes in one ear and out the other, and they don't actually comprehend what they're reading. But you have the right to receive information from any other conservator of the child concerning the health, education, and welfare of the child. That says you have the right. It doesn't say they, the, the custodial parent has, they, even though they have that right, the custodial parent doesn't have to give you that information. And it sucks because you would think the other parent would want to give you that information. Little Johnny got in trouble today. He said this in school. Uh, let's talk to him. Let's be reasonable reasonable adults and let's parent our child but there's a lot of parents out there that have high conflicting um co-parenting issues with the custodial parent 
Uh, and and most of the time it's out of power, right? The custodial parent, they like to flex their power. They believe that since the child lives with them, they have ultimate decision making. And that's absolutely incorrect. And a lot of parents that are going through this, y'all need to start flexing your rights and duties as a parent. So you have the right to receive that information. You have the right to confer or talk with the other parent to the extent possible before making a decision concerning the health, education, and welfare of the child. Just because you have that right, again, doesn't mean that that other, even though that other parent has that right, doesn't mean that other parent has to do it. It sucks that it's like that, but um, that's your right. Um, you have the right to access medical, dental, psychological, and educational records for the child. Uh, even if your child goes to the nurse, you have those rights. There's um, something which is called FERPA. It's a federal law. You can ask for a FERPA report through public information, and they'll give you all of that information as well. You have the right to consult with school officials, including child welfare and educational status, including school activities. Now, one of the new pieces of legislation that was introduced a few legislative sessions ago was the right to attend school activities, including lunches, performances, and field trip. If you are a joint managing conservator, go to your court order, read the first or second page. It should, should say that you were appointed a joint managing conservator, sole managing possessory, whatever. You're not going to find you are a custodial or not custodial parent on your uh, court order. But when you go over there and you see that you are a joint managing conservator, you have the right to attend school activities, including school lunches, performances and field trips. And I think it's really important this one, because a lot of parents get hung up that, hey, the custodial parent said I couldn't go to a school dance or I couldn't go to mom and dad or uh, child and dad dance or donuts with dad or whatever. And a lot of these parents get down on themselves. And that's why I say you need to flex your um, parental rights and duties with the school district, with the teacher. And y'all need to let them know that you're present. Um, you have the right to be designated on the child's records as the person to be notified in case of the emergency. Like I was saying, just because I have that right, my ex has the right to alter that because she's a custodial parent. Right. So she took me off the list and then because she knows it, I have to drive over there to put myself on. Um, which is really petty. It should be illegal, but that's what I'm dealing with. And that's what some of y'all are dealing with. Um, you have the right to consent to medical, dental, and surgical treatment during an emergency and in involving an immediate danger to health and safety of the child. You have the right to manage the estate. Um, and that, that's about it for uh, 153.073. If you scroll down to 153.074, those are your rights and duties during your periods of possession. And of course, it has care control, protection, and reasonable discipline. Absolutely. So parents, you're going to go through this rough time. Sometimes you're going to look into it, find out, stand up. Things don't change if you don't voice yourself, okay? If you do not make yourself present. And, and they will look at you as an aggressive individual. Even if you question them, they're going to look at you, oh, he's very aggressive. He's a bad parent. They'll label everything else. Shoot it right back at him. He's a bad teacher. Man. Yeah, record everything and do everything on email. If you talk to him on the phone, record it. Because uh, in, in, the, in, in the times that we live in today, everyone is hostile. Um, you know, everybody is hostile when they talk to you. So... Uh, to protect yourself, to protect uh, your rights and duties to your child, always, always, always record. Record um, again if you're interacting with uh, school officials. It's your right. You have a right. It's a public school. You have a right to film on public property. You have a right to uh, film your public administer uh, administrators. You have a right. Uh, to record. We're in a one-party state. And again, if you're going to do things by email, always try to be professional because if not, they'll use it against you. Absolutely. Folks, I hope this helps you guys out. I know it's hard. Keep fighting the fight. You know, your your kids only are kids once, so be involved in, your, in their lives. Um, you're going to deal with people that are just assholes. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And uh, you, 
you can deal with it one 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 or another uh, way is is uh, by showing love to your child. Just keep on moving forward with that because it's believe me, it's it it brings people down, and um, more so the child. That's the one that's going to get affected. George, I want to continue for. I want to tell you this: continue doing the good fight. Continue doing what you're doing. And folks out there, if you're if you're going through this process and you're feeling this out, reach out to George, reach out to us, reach out to a group. Here in Laredo, there's there's not a group. We've been trying to form form one, make a support group because that that helps others understand what's going out there. And be careful with your attorneys. Some of those attorneys in in, in there are just shysters and they're gonna they don't care whether if they signed and they signed you your your rights away. They don't care about that. Oh, them, do well, it, if do I can leave on one note, Paul. Um, so the word right, right is an entitlement. If you look up the word right and you look up a legal definition of the word right, it's going to come up and it's going to tell you it's an entitlement. So these are your entitlements by law. These are your fundamental rights um, and entitlements. So just because you say I have a right. Uh, to free speech, I have a right to bear arms, I have the right to assemble, I have the right to my child um, at school, his education, I have those rights. Just think of them as entitlements. Those are your entitlements by law. Absolutely. And what I'm talking about... Go back and read your orders. 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 And the reason I keep emphasizing that is because a lot of parents... You have your court orders and you say you're the non-custodial parent and you never have read your court orders. You don't know what your rights are. You don't know what your duties are. So if you're going to go up there and you're going to fight for your child, make sure that you're on the same. Uh, you've leveled the playing field. That way, everybody knows what the rules are. You know what the rules are and you're just not bumping your gums and and you're sounding different. Right. So make sure you read your court order. If you don't understand, reach out to Paul or I. Uh, we'll try to help you navigate that water, uh, that piece of water, and uh, we'll go from there. Till next time, you guys stay safe, be safe, and God bless you guys. Later. Thanks for having me. Have you ever wondered about what happens in a martial arts studio? Well, you start right away by setting goals, building determination, gaining focus, building skills, all while becoming more fit, gaining confidence and learning self-defense. We Thorn Academy is a school where attitude meets aptitude. So give us a call at 956-401-4868.